Hey everybody, it's CC Chapman, and I'm psyched because today I get to introduce you to a really close friend of mine, Steve Garfield. Steve is one of the pioneers of online video. He, he, he wrote the book on it. He wrote the book, Get Seen, which is, in my opinion, the book on online video. And if you haven't read it, I definitely suggest you check it out. So kick back and enjoy some uh, fun times with my good buddy Steve Garfield from stevegarfield.com. So I'm Steve Garfield from stevegarfield.com and I'm passionate about learning new things and sharing what I learn. Let's see, you know, um, I've always been interested in media and creating things. Um, you know, when I was little, we had the family camera on vacations and my mother said, here, you just take all the photos. So. I, I, I got the family camera, which I thought was cool. I, I got to look at, at everything through the frame. So I've, that is an interest I've always had. And then um, I actually always have been interested in radio, TV, and would want to kind of be in it, you know, and, and create that kind of thing. But um, when I grew up, my parents said that I really should go to college and learn accounting. That was the thing, it's true. So I always did all the video stuff on the side. Um, I worked in radio on the side. One thing I did was um, I talked my way into a radio station in Boston. I don't know if you know this. Um, I used to listen to Eagle 93.7 and half of the crew went on vacation. So I woke up at 3 in the morning and I said to my wife, Carol, I'm going down to the radio station to see if I can get on the air down there. And she's like, I'll see you in an hour. <laughs> Goodbye. So I went down there and um, I talked my way in and got on the show. And they were like, what are you doing here? Well, I'm here to help you guys out. The whole crew's gone. Like, I really love the show. And so after the show, they brought me in back and they said, you're really a big fan, aren't you? I said, yeah, I would love to work with you guys. They says, okay, how about, you know, helping us be a producer? And that's, you know, I talked my way in. And so I was just really, really interested in that. Um, so I've been interested in media and things like that, and then I started learning video on my own, on the side, after work. I um, learned video in public access TV. I did that for years, so I learned how to run the camera, lighting, how to produce shows. Then I had my own show, and it was called Steve Show, live. <laughs> and it was on Friday nights at seven, and I would go into the studio, and I ran everything, but with all the cable TV equipment and the phone would start ringing and I'd have roll-ins and things I produced and it was really, really fun. Then came the point when I could have my own Mac, Final Cut Pro, my own camera, camera which is a Canon GL2, and I could do it all at home and not have to go to the cable place. So that's how I got ready to produce video. And then I started figuring out, like, how do I put it online? And then the turning point happened it was January 1st, 2004, and I like to do a New Year's resolution every year, and I thought, you know, blogging made it so easy to put text up on the web. Why hasn't anybody done the same thing with video? There was no video blogging, so I made up a blog. I called it Steve Garfield's Video Blog. I went to the Apple site, figured out how to grab the HTML, put it in the page, and, and link to it, and I made a little video. And I said, 2004 is going to be the year of the video blog. And, and I did it really, it's, it's, it was a technical challenge. So I just wanted to figure out how to do it easily, how to put it on, and then as I blogged more and more video on that video blog, I would share what I learned, how I, what code I used, how I shot the video, and then people, we found each other online. Jay Dedman was one from New York, and we found each other, they started a Yahoo video blogging group, and there were like five of us all sharing this knowledge. Oh, this is how I did it. Oh, this is how I did it. And then we watched every other video of each other. There were no shows, no series, no advertising. And so we were just doing video of what happened in our lives. So we were doing that and more people joined the video blogging group. And we did this throughout 2004. And then at the end of 2004, this one person from Chicago was going to New York. And I was like, oh, I would like to meet that guy. I'll go to New York. 
And then everybody on the list started saying, I'll go to New York, I'll go to New York, I'll go to New York. So we made a thing and we called it VloggerCon and we had about 70 people who were figuring this stuff out, meet in New York at this first VloggerCon we called it. And when we first met each other, we would walk up to each other and we'd be like, I feel like I know you. It was like, this was the first time any of that had ever happened to us and everybody who has done it knows now. But then it was like, wow, this stuff is powerful. Because what we were sharing was moments of our lives and we all got to really know each other. So that blew up and then YouTube came out 2005. So I've been doing this for years and years and years and got known as someone who puts video on the web and shares that knowledge. And it led to David Merriman Scott saying, have you ever thought of writing a book? And I was like, not really. So you want to write one? So I wrote the book, Get Seen, which became part of a series. And when I wrote that, that enhanced my profile online. And, and that's how we got to today. And I just loved, I even thought of a, a photo um, that I took and it was of my foot taking my first step in Rhode Island. And I have a picture of my foot on the ground and I can picture the photo. I could probably find it. And I was like, it's like an Instagram, but it was really what we're trying to recreate now. And that is so cool because it's just exactly what I'm still doing. Everybody does that same thing. But as a kid, you know, I had it and then I just had it. And it, it was in a, it's in a box somewhere and it's not really shared. And now we do this stuff and we, we share it all the time. Making money off of giving everything away is a tough question. It's like, why am I giving everything away? My wife says, why are you doing all this stuff for free? Yeah, you know, I don't hear it as much now, but in the beginning, I was just giving everything away for free. But, you know, what I get, things come back to me by giving stuff away free. I don't know much about it, but karma is a word that people say, and when I give things away, Things just come back and these thing, things work out. I don't have an SEO monetization plan and a calendar of times and best times to post or blog or tweet. I don't do anything like that. I just put it out there. And so on the internet, I subscribe to people. That's my thing. Some people subscribe to websites and things like that. So I subscribe to people, I meet people, we make friends, we, we see how each other works. And then there comes a time when they're like, you know what, I need someone who's going to go out and shoot an interview and deliver it in a timely manner. Who's in Boston? Steve Garfield. Drop me a little email. Hey, Steve, can you do this, this interview for us next week? Boom, it's an hour. And I'm like, yes, I can. Here's my charge and I'll do it. And we do it and I, I send it to them and it's all done perfectly. So they, so, you know, you know, if you follow me, you know what you're going to get. So people are comfortable in contacting me and say, Hey, I want this and they know what I'm going to do, but you know what else they get? They don't, you could hire a kid from college to go out and shoot an interview, but when they hire me to do the thing that are going to get me tweeting about it beforehand, putting up photos on Flickr, on Instagram, saying, hey, I met this person, I'm going out, all that social media before. And then when the inter interview goes up, they're gonna get me saying, hey, look what I did, put it on Facebook, Google+, my blog, and all that social sharing. So, you know, I really don't like getting involved in a lot of contract negotiations and things like that. And those, what I do, it fails. Those things typically always fail in like, you know, they'll say, you need to write this blog post and you need to keep track of this, that, and social media that you do and get back to us and all that. And I'm like, oh my God, this is just wrong and it feels wrong and it usually is. But the other type of engagement is they're like an email. Hey Steve, can you just do what you do? And, and the main thing is to get here and shoot this thing and do it and I do it. So the way that the money making happens is it comes back to me. Um, part of the thing that's important is I need to let certain people know what I can do for them or like what it is that, that I do. Everybody knows, they can see on Twitter what I do. I go out to eat, drink nice beers, share that. 
you know, but I also do certain other things that, you know, they, that I would get paid for. So those are going out and shooting interviews. Um, I do selective live streaming now because I started experimenting with, after I did all the video online, I'm like, well, how are we going to go live? So then I started experimenting with how to live stream. So then certain clients say, oh, you can live stream. Will you do this for us? So I do that for selective clients. And then I also work with startups and I give a lot of advice. And initially I would give advice because it's fun. You know, it's fun to work with a startup, help them out. And then the startup would go out of business or nothing would happen. Or then they'd get sold and I didn't, participate in it. So I'm like, something's wrong here. So as time progressed, I learned that I had to make it known to the startup, hey, I would like to work with you, but can I participate in your growth in some way? Can I, you know, invest or can we have stock or something? So I arranged that with the company, then I'm more committed to help them grow. So some of my work with early startups has turned out really well and has just, you know, made everything, you know, all the free stuff that I did gets covered by, you know, the really good investments that I do. So now I'm doing some angel investing, which is like the third thing I do. Well, um, when I was at the radio station and I was learning audio production, the DJ was Kevin Carlson and he was a perfectionist. So when I delivered an audio edit to him, he would be so critical, you know, it had to be perfect to the, to the second. He was like, that doesn't sound right and I'd have to redo it. So what I really learned was to take my time and do it right, you know, the first time. So um, I, I like to do things and have them be right and then they're, they're off and they're gone. I tell people that they should chase their dreams, but don't quit their job and have nothing going on. If they have a job that maybe they don't even like, they need to stay at that job to make money and pursue their passion after work, weekends. And a great example is Gary Vaynerchuk. Crush It is the book that people should totally read. He works so hard. He had his wine store, but then he did his videos like at another time and he just worked so hard all the time. And the other thing he does is he put videos online, and then he read the comments and responded to comments like till 2 a.m. in the morning. He just was so passionate about connecting with the people who, you know, watched his videos. So I have a million examples of me doing that exact thing. When I read that, I was like, yeah, exactly. I mean, that's what, what obviously what you should do. Because I worked in a job at a computer distributor. I did marketing, and I was also purchasing, which was ridiculous. But I worked there from um, 10 to 7, Monday through Friday. But I went to the radio show where I was producing Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 3.30 to 9. So I would go to sleep early, wake up, go into the radio station. I wrote stories and I wrote jokes and, you know, produced news and little segments. And then the show would wrap up at like 9. We'd have our little post-show meeting. Then I drive out to my other job, 10 to 7. And I did that for like a year and a half because I was just so into doing that thing. And I learned so much, like all about editing and how to edit, which led to learning how to do it for uh, video. Okay. Comedian came in and I showed him the jokes I was writing for the morning guys. And he's like, these jokes are good. You should be writing for Jay Leno. And I was like, uh, what, what do you mean? He's like, oh, I am a fax joke writer for Leno and he fax in jokes every day and if he uses your joke, he pays you. So he, but you can't get that job unless someone gets you in. So he got me in, this guy. And I signed a contract with Leno. So every day I would write the jokes for the radio show and whichever ones the guys used, I didn't fax in and then I would fax in the rest. And then if, and then I would tape the, Leno show and then the next day I'd see if they used any of my jokes and when they used my jokes I'd get like a hundred bucks or whatever it was so that was pretty cool but that all led to you know you know that was all from following my passion and so writing jokes was another thing that just was a side thing which turned into writing for Jay Leno the jokes that I wrote for the morning show were like based on news like news 
jokes. Um, I do it on Twitter now. And when I do it on Twitter and I get a tweet back by like one person who says that was brilliant or that was funny, I'm like, okay, you know, and it just keeps me going. Just then I know one person got the little joke that I told, so I still have that outlet. I guess you could say I do this 24 seven. I am always doing this. Um, my good friend Chris Brogan has a thing where each year he asks you to say your goals for the year and it's three words. So for the past three years I've done it, but this year I totally committed to doing it and I put the three words right on stevegarfield.com, right on my website, they're huge. So it says uh, broadcast, invest, and play. So that's how I do it. I have in my mind that things that I want to do is broadcasting and you know, I'm working on um, you know, hosting talk shows on the web and that's going really great. Investing, I'm doing that, working with the companies I've invested in and looking for new investments. But I also have play, which I'm consciously working at having time to play. So, for example, every morning my wife and I take a walk, which is a two mile walk around the pond, it's beautiful here. And so we have at least an hour every morning where we walk together. That's our time for the day together. We talk and we come back, have coffee, and so that is a fixed one hour every day for us. Um, other things with play, I'm, I'm really conscious about integrating that into my work day or my daily work, and the thing that just happened was um, I ended up getting a sponsorship from TaylorMade Golf, because I tweeted, I want to get back into golf. What clubs are out there? Like, what should I be looking at? Because I haven't played golf in like over 10 years. I want to get back into it. So TaylorMade tweeted me back, hey, you know, you should check out our clubs and we want to send you a driver. And I was like, okay. And they say, we want to fit you for it. So I look at their website and they have these different places that you can get fitted, like a retail store, but close to here in Boston, they have a ta TaylorMade Performance Lab where they put these ping pong balls all on you and they have eight cameras and they, they fit you. And I was, I, so I emailed back and I said, this is cool, but can I go to that place? And they said, yeah, we'll set you up for that place. And I said, well, I need a whole set of clubs. Can we work some type of a deal? So they gave me a media rate to buy the club. So I mean, that worked into play, but it also, I said, well, I'll do a video for you. So it kind of works where I get to get new clubs, which is the thing I want to do for play, but I also fit it in for doing video and they get a nice video out of it. And it was a great experience. I think everybody should get themselves fitted for golf clubs at TaylorMade sponsor disclosure. <laughs> I never thought of that question. Who would I trade places with? I would trade places with Jimmy Fallon, <laughs> my good friend, Jimmy Fallon, because I met him through video blogging. Um, that quick story is that before he started his new talk show, he started a video blog to show behind the scenes. And I love behind the scenes. So he put up a video blog his first day and he said, we're going to have a new video blog every day. And so as someone who basically almost invented video blogging, you're not going to have a new video blog every day. That would be a new URL and a new header and a new everything. He's putting a new video blog, video on his blog every day. So I just wrote a comment. Hey, Jimmy, that, and I said, it's, it's a new video on a blog every day. So funny thing happened that Friday, he did a video, he did a video every day. That Friday, he said, well, let's look at viewer comments. And our first one is from Steve Garfield, who says, we're not doing a new video blog every day, we're doing a, doing a new video on the blog every day. So that was cool because he was reading the comments, he's famous, and that was kind of a thing that happened. Then the next Monday, he asked for viewer videos. So I'm like, okay, I'll do a video. So I did a video, sent it in, and that Friday, when he went to play the videos, he said, um, and now our first video is from our old friend, Steve Garfield. <laughs> and he played my video. And so then I sent, and that was really awesome, right? I was pretty psyched. And so then I sent them feedback on how to do video more. I sent an email, I, I met his producer, Gavin Purcell. It was really cool, so we had this conversation going on. And then um, I went to CES, Consumer Electronics Show, and Jimmy Fallon happened to be there. So I went up to him and he says, hey, Steve Garfield. He says, that's what they call me over the Jimmy Fallon Show, one name, Steve Garfield. So I interviewed him and 
that happened and we did a great interview, then we're tweeting back and forth. He's like, you should come to New York sometime. So I went to the show and then he had me backstage and I did a video and it was really cool. We kind of became friends. So I love um, that idea of the talk show and the way he runs his show. So it would be kind of fun to be that um, one day. But you know, that is actually something I'm actually doing. Like you say, what would I love to do? It's like, when I, this is what I do. I think of something I want to do and then I, I do it. It's, it's just like, there's not going to be any issue of me getting to where I want to be. I just think up a thing and then I go do that thing. I want to put video on the web, video blogging. I want to stream live, I'm live streaming. So now it's like, you want to be Jimmy Fallon and switch places with him for a day? Well, I'm already doing something similar where, like last year I did um, Steve Garfield TV on the Pulse Network. It was a year's worth of shows, one a week, where I was sat there and hosted a show. I love doing that. So that's why that actually came to mind as something I want to do, but I'm kind of working towards doing that. Well, I don't really have a bucket list, you know? Not go into space like John Herman <laughs> or anything like that. Actually, the thing I would be working on now um, would be like be that guy who goes on the Today Show and shows those new gadgets or tech stuff. That would be a cool thing. I would like to do that. And I guess as I do all my on-screen video things and I say, oh, here's this product, here's this, here's that, I'm like ready to have that happen. And the um, opportunity is getting there for that to happen. So if you're watching this and you want to chase your passion, the answer is to just do it and start doing what that passion is. And it doesn't have to be perfect. My thing is video. People are afraid of video, but you can just start doing video with whatever computer you have, um, a webcam, record yourself, save it. No one has to see it. Um, I worked on this one site called Seismic, and in the early days you would record a video and then the system would crash and you'd lose it and you'd have to do it over again. And people found that by doing it once or twice, the second time was maybe better than the first time. So. Whatever your passion is, start doing it. Don't worry about it um, being perfect and just get it out there. A lot of times things I do, I don't worry about them being perfect because I have to go on to the next thing. So you just do them, get them out there and move to the next thing and it's, it's okay. So it's okay for whatever you're doing not to be perfect. Just go out there and 